possessions, all sorts of valuable assets to have as their own, and this of course is the most valuable asset that a human being, a e that you can have is the possessed Torah, and uh, something that we, we have to learn to appreciate. Blessed is the one who chose them, who chose the Torah scholars to revere and to respect, and, to, and also to revere their teachings, to, to retain and to, to drink with thirst their teachings, to sit at their, foot, at their feet and to, and to absorb their Torah. So, uh, there was the Medrash brings in so far as appreciation that the gentleman was traveling along and he came upon a farm and uh, he noticed there was lined up with barrels and barrels and barrels and uh, he asked the farmer he said what what do you have what are these barrels here he said I'll tell you the truth he said I'll open it up I'll show you I don't really know what it is, but all I, what I do is that when it, at a certain time of the year from the tree, the, the vine there falls off the, the fruits and I put them into this barrel and it's, it's like an oily substance comes up and he takes a look, my goodness gracious, barrels and <coughs> barrels and barrels of pure olive oil. You can pay 40 cents an ounce for for olive oil. And here is Yesh, so the Midrash concludes, Yesh, Mishresh, is people that, that have, uh, they stumble upon something and they have no idea of the value of what they stumbled upon. So to uphold and to appreciate the dignity of the uh, Torah is something which is very valuable. Baruch Shabbat HaBohem of Mishnasam. The Mayor says, Kholoishik Torah Vishma, Whoever studies the Torah for the sake of Torah itself, not for reward, not for profit, not for gain, not for a, a livelihood, Zoyche with Dvarim Harbi. He merits many, many things, Dvarim Harbi. Dvarim Harbi also means, means the uh, excessive speech. So he's saying just that women probably study Torah Nishma, that's why they're Zoyche with Dvarim Harbi. But how far reaching does Baruch Bahem will Mishnah some that to uh, appreciate, delve, and uh, to retain the Mishnah some, the teachings of our, of our, of our uh, masters. The, uh, the Dean, the Rosh Yeshiva of Kavanis, from Baruch Ber, one of the luminaries of the Torah world in his day, one of the great, his writings are revered by every Torah scholar, so there was in the uh, a tumble, a turmoil in the yeshiva, uh, they had complaints, the, uh, the, the dean of men, the mashgiach, the students felt that he wasn't really as caring and as generous as he should be with chlukah, with the allotment that the students, students are supposed to get. So then they wanted that the Rosh Yeshiva Baruch Ber was a very, very of a golden heart and, uh, and so loved Tamil HaChomim, they wanted that he should be in charge of distributing the allotments. So he says he doesn't do anything without his master. He was the head of the famous yeshiva, hundreds of students, that, that they drank with thirst every word that came from his mouth. And he said he doesn't do anything without his master. His master was, 
was one of the greatest, Reb Chaim Brisker. So he went to his, his Rebbe, Reb Chaim Brisker, he says, you want to change the students, why don't we should change the order of things that instead of the Mashkiach, the Dean of Men, uh, should uh, be in charge of the allotments, then I should do it. So, so he told him, he says, things should continue the way they are. Let the Dean Mashkiach, he should continue giving out the allotment of a Duda Zaina Mensch. You do, you stand up and don't let him do what he wants. So he came back and they were all anxious to hear what he brought back, what sort of decision his Rebbe, his teacher. So he, he the Chazal, our sages tell us, says, Le'olam yishane odom v'losh A person should always, you should uh, uh, use the same language, imply the same language that his, his teacher uses. And when he repeats a Torah lecture from this Rebbe, or something he should use, or whatever he heard expressions from his Rebbe, try to use the same expression. So he told him, like he says, the Rebbe, my Rebbe said to me that the Dean should should still give give them out and do you and you be a mensch. Instead of saying that I should be a mensch, he said you use the exact same word. That's how far that's uh, that that uh, the the, uh, the exact wording of a how to revere a, a rebbe, but not only how to revere a rebbe, but also how to revere the students as well. The same Baruch Bear, when he would see a Torah scholar, a yeshiva student, my oh my goodness, he would embrace him, he would hug him, he would hold him, hold him so dearly. Torah, the Chaim Zonenfeld. Robert Rushalayim, a uh, a young man who was uh, was engaged, and his future father-in-law had uh, promised him uh, a dowry of ten thousand pounds that he should continue in his studies because he had a very bright future. He was a brilliant young man. He had he had uh, overwhelming at a young age. He had mastered the entire Talmud. If he would continue. He would be one of the great luminaries of the world. So he uh, promised him 10,000 pounds. And uh, usually, uh, if there's that, that sort of arrangement, agreement, it's all taken care of before the wedding. So uh, he, he came, the young man, the groom, came from Chaim Zonfel, and he said, uh, he said he wants was from Chaim Zonfeld to be the uh, to officiate to be the Masada Gidushin. And uh, Chaim Zonfeld knew that his future family had, had made an arrangement to promise that he's going to support him, he's going to give him 10,000 pounds. So he said, uh, did you get the 10,000 pounds yet? He says, no. He says, really? It came the wedding night, everybody was gathered, and uh, they were getting ready to march to the Chuppi. So the Chaim Zonfeld went over to the father of the bride. He said, did you give him yet the 10,000 pounds? He said, no. He said, we're not going to the Chuppi until the 10,000 pounds are here. He said, my goodness, that's wild. How can you embarrass... A, a Jewish daughter like that? My goodness, we shouldn't go to the ring. I don't have where to take it from. He said, who told you to promise it? Why did you say something like that? He said, young man, his future's at stake. We're not going. He sat down, Chaim sat down in church. And he told the groom, the groom's going to sit next to me. We're not, we're not going to the chutbin until the 10,000 pounds are here. He ran around town like a poison mouse, and he begged everyone and said, please have pity. My daughter, my goodness, you... Uh, we have to go to the wedding, and, and uh, Chaim Zondel said we can't go until the 10,000 pounds are here. So he ran, he, he ran, so they, they, everybody felt for him. This one loaned him 100, this one loaned him 200, this one 300, 500. He finally came running back out of breath with the 10,000 pounds. He says, all right, Chaim says, now we'll go to the chuppi. He says, give it to the 
to the groom. The groom, t- he said, take it. Chaim said, take it. He has to take it. He took it and he put it in his pocket. They went to the chuppah. After the chuppah, he says, young man, horse, come here. Give those 10,000 pounds back to your father-in-law. Mm-hmm. He was astounded. He shocked. He says, I don't understand the point. He said, I'll tell you what the point is. I want him to realize that a, a, a Torah scholar has to be taken seriously. He's not a puppet or something. He can, he's not worldly. He's, uh, he's, uh, he, he grew up in the, in the backwoods somewhere. You can do whatever you want with him. A, t- a Talmud Chochem is not a Shemat. He does that thing that a Yeshiva man, a Talmud Chochem, he, he has nothing else on his mind besides doing mischief, helping somebody else. But of course, it's a, it, 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 that's what we're here for. We're here to, to help everybody. But uh, work Shemachem Ahem Mishnasam. It was during the World War One when rampant was was hunger was rampant. There was starvation, and the role of the Vinsk, Mayor Simche, so they didn't have the community didn't have to pay him his salary, and he didn't want to be a burden on the community, so he would dress up with uh, like a lumberjack, with, with the cap, with the full dress. Get up five in the morning, go chop wood, and sell it, and then come back to town and beat a rabbit in town. He wanted to make sure that he didn't disgrace the community. He's the rabbi of the community. He should go out and chop wood. He's, he carries with him the honor of the community. The Torah scholars carry with them many, many things. They carry with them not their own honor, they carry with them the honor of, 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 of many Jews as well. The uh, the, to appreciate, like the, that ignorant farmer who didn't appreciate, the, there's uh, someone who was in the hospital. We're not made of him, We strive, we struggle, and others struggle as well. There was someone who was had the, the diagnosis of serious illness and he had surgery, and there came around the, a chaplain of a, of a different faith came came around, and he's talking with him. And he and uh, he started to tell him about him as if he didn't know it himself. You know, he's, he's well, you know, good morning. He woke up. He said, "You know, you have a very serious illness, and you may not live long, or something of that nature." You know, that's that's what you call a person that's here to comfort and to give to to give someone strength to fight and to have and have a will to live. He's he's here today still. It's that's over fifteen years ago. When the child walks out, that's enough to kill you, my goodness gracious. Among stars, Reb Chaim Shmolevich, one of the great Rosh Yeshivas, he was diagnosed with a terminal illness in his voice box. A phenomenal, fiery speaker. He could light up an audience, oh, excite them, incite them with his, with his pearls. And the doctor said he has to, they have to remove his voice box. So he went to Reb Elia Lapian, a great sage, a great Torah scholar. And he said, I have to undergo surgery through my voice box. He said, my goodness. He said, you who are given such a heavenly gift, such a golden, that pearls come from your from that throat, that should be lost to the world? No, it cannot be. He said, do not have the surgery. And I take upon myself, I'm going to pray on your behalf. And your man will help you, you'll be well. He lived for 45 years after the diagnosis. Boruch Shabbacha Mahem Mishosam. Chalit Malakai Shoeimah. Rotsam. Akkoi Boruch Ruzakai Shoeimah. The Tikhoch. Himbalam Teru Mitzvah, Shinamar, Adonai Chavez, Manchit, Bayak, Mokhaniyat.